A fresh new record has been set for the longest space mission by an American. NASA astronaut Frank Rubio has now been outside the Earth's atmosphere for more than 357 days. The previous record was 355 and 3 hours and 45 minutes. Rubio is on track to become the first American and the seventh person in the world to ever spend a full year in space. For more on this uh, out of this world achievement, we've got CBS News space analyst Bill Harwood joining us from the Kennedy Space Center. I guess the obvious question, Bill, why? Why has Rubio been in space so long? How much longer is he expected to stay up there? And, and how do we all benefit? Well, it's interesting. You know, he originally planned to spend just six months in space. That's the normal tour of duty for a space station crew member. Uh, but he launched on a Russian Soyuz spacecraft last, last September. And the following December, that spacecraft suffered a massive coolant leak. They think it got hit by a micrometeoroid. It ruptured a coolant line. And the Russians decided they didn't want to trust it to bring that crew back to Earth. Uh, instead, they launched a fresh Soyuz uh, back in February, March time frame. And now they're going to come home on that spacecraft on September 27th. So to get the Russian launch schedule back on track with normal crew rotations, they had to stay up an extra six months. So just imagine getting that news when you're <laughs> midway into your six-month mission. Oh, by the way, it's going to be another six months before you can come home. Wow. So he wasn't lost in space, but Rubio certainly stuck in space <laughs> for a long amount of time. Talk to us about the physical impact that this has on, on his body. I know that some astronauts come back to Earth I think, taller than they went up. And, you know, all these advanced That's right. companies are planning um, human development of maybe Mars or the moon one day. What does it do to the body? Well, you know, it's really interesting. Uh, you know, the, there's all kind of effects. You lose uh, bone density, you lose muscle mass. People might not realize it, but every crew member on the International Space Station spends two hours every day, every single day, exercising. They have the equivalent of weight machines up there, treadmill, exercise bike, every day two hours. And that's just to maintain the body's muscle tone and bone density as best you can, but they still lose it anyway. And so when they come back to Earth uh, and get back into the Earth's gravity field after a year in space, as you can imagine, uh, despite the exercise, they don't walk off the spacecraft, they're carried off. And it can take anywhere from one to six months before an astronaut begins to feel relatively normal again. And it's, it's not just muscles and bone. Their neurovestibular system, your ability to balance and perceive those things, that's also affected, and that also has to get back to normal, and it takes time. That's amazing, and it also makes me think, then, if we do one day, you know, settle on a planet with less gravity, we would have to work out a lot to keep our bodies together, right? Well, you would. I mean, it would depend on how much gravity is there. I mean, if you're on the surface of Mars, uh, that is certainly lots better than being in zero gravity. So uh, you'd probably still have to exercise, but maybe not as much. And then what happens then when they come back down here to Earth? I would imagine you've got to re-acclimatize re um, yourself to the planet. Uh, absolutely. You know, NASA has some very well thought out protocols on how they deal with that. Uh, they get intensive physical therapy when they first get back. And, they, and, you know, clearly you're taking it very, very easy for the first month or so. You know, we just saw uh, four crew members come back from the space station a few days ago that had been up there for six months. And within a day or so, they were up and walking around. They did a news briefing yesterday, as a matter of fact, and they all look pretty, pretty fit. Uh, the folks who stay up a, a year or, or in that kind of a time frame, it takes them longer to get their earth legs back, if you will. But it does come back. Uh, there can be some longer range effects. Some astronauts' eyes are affected by weightlessness. Uh, they, don't, they, they can't see as clearly when they come back uh, because of focusing issue. That's something they're researching. They study that all the time. But all of these questions have to be resolved before you send people to planets like Mars, for example, or on really long deep space missions where it's going to take you 7 to 12 months just to get there. And you gotta be you got to be fit when you land and get off on the surface. So these are all big question marks that they're trying to resolve with the station. Yeah, I didn't realize all the neurological impacts, but to everyone listening who someday oh, yeah. wants to get out to space or, or to settle on a planet, you've got a lot of working out to do to keep your body together. Uh, Bill Harwood, great to chat with this about this with you. Thanks for joining us.